Shabbat Shalom. We're coming to what I call it an intermezzo, a period in the, in the readings that we have been reading from a Shemot, from the book of Exodus. Uh, we are going to arrive to a, a, a position in which looks like that everything changed. The, the direction of the, of the teachings and look like that the, there is a pause here and we are going to be told to build a mikdash or a mishkan, the tabernacle or a sanctuary mm -hmm. in which the presence of the creator is going to be shown there. Then we are going to see the elements that contains this uh, tent and we're going to see many things, many implements. But uh, one thing that start this, uh, like a, uh, the, many parashas start, but he say, by Adaber Adonai El Moshe. Uh, here is the creator is going to talk directly to Moshe and going to tell him to do something and to tell the people. He's talking to them. And then he's going to use the word truma. The, uh, what it means is a donation or a giving. No? But there is a word that is used here that is very interesting in, in chapter, in verse two. Jitveno libo. One way to understand this word, this phrase, is about a willing heart or desirable heart. No? Now, I have read many, many uh, rabbis and very interesting uh, explanations about this phrase. But one thing is, uh, I have been teaching you that in the Torah, the word lev, heart, has nothing to do with feelings, but it has to do with the mind, has to do with the uh, intention. Okay? Why I need to take the feelings? Because it's, it's exactly what is going to happen here. The Creator is going to tell the people of Israel to give willingly, you can say cheerfully, or something that you do it rationally, not emotionally. This is very important. You know, you have seen in many places, and I have been told, by the way, by many people, and they're right, that I am a terrible fundraiser. Many people here in the community have told me, Rabbi, you need to speak more about giving. And to me, giving is like a, I, am, I become a dentist, that I am pulling a teeth without anesthesia. You know, that sounds like that. And I ask myself, why is so difficult for people to give? And it's very interesting. Less you have, more miserable you are, and less you give. This is a, a rule. It's like you are tied to nothing. You know, sometimes you say, I give you this, like they are doing a favor to me. And I resent that in my being. So terrible. That's the reason as a rabbi, I don't talk about giving. And people say, you need to talk more about that. Because many people take it as a self-service. That I am asking for me. And I detest that. I have problem with that. But here the creator is giving a very interesting teaching and rule to all of us. Basically, he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, tell the people not to give. 
He used the word to take. There are two words, kah and ten. Kah means to, to take, and uh, ten means to give. He never used the word give. He always used the word to take. And the reason is very simple. He doesn't need anything from us. Totally the contrary. We need everything from him. It's the opposite. And when he said to you to take, it's because he already has been, he has given to you. The only thing that you need to do is to take what he has given to you. But even that, you are so tired. We saw with the manna. He came out of heaven. We didn't do anything to get the manna. The man. And what is saying? It's a very, very specific rule. On Friday, take double portion. But the other, they try to take more and more and more and more and more. And look at what happened. Now, I don't know if you know, but before I continue, let me read to you in chapter 12 of this, the, this book, Chemo, verse 36. And the Lord made the Egyptian to have grace, him is this here, no? To have uh, respect, some translation, or to not to be ugly with the, with, with the Israelis, you know? With the, and to give to them everything to the point that we say that Israel emptied Egypt. Here's a plunder, yeah. you know? Wow. Okay. What do you mean here? Remember, God never said to you, give you, give. He always said to you, take. Now, what, is the, what are the elements that he is going to be asking for? Look at what he starts. Look at what he's asking for. This truma, this offering, this donation, they, they must be, verse 3, gold, silver, copper, turquoise, oh, all the most finest things. The top of the top. What it means? Only accept for those ones who are going to, give, to take willingly. Willingly. Tell them to take. And what they ask is the most precious to them. I say many times that we are accustomed when we become very charitable, we, we give what we don't need. In many groups, they have learned to give almsgiving. In Spanish, we call it limosna. We love limosna, arms giving. What I have in my pocket, I, I throw it. What I don't need. When I give something, it's because I don't use it anymore, or it's, it's there, it's, it's not good anymore. I throw it away. That I am a big giver. I give what I don't want. That's not giving. You give the most important thing from you. And the worst part that those who think that they are giving, they think that they are giving you, they're making you a favor. And they cheat to themselves. They fail to themselves. They destroy themselves. 
and they always become worse and worse and worse. Because more tied are you to your things, less happiness you have because they become your masters. And he asked the people of Israel to take to them the most precious thing that they had received from the Egyptians. And what it say? The result was they came and they gave so much abundantly. We are going to see in the in the later chapters that they needed to say to them, "No more! Don't bring more! Stop! It's enough!" Huh? I think one day I'm going to tell you, "No more! Please don't bring any more." <laughs> and here again. Why this, this association, I will call it, about in the scriptures, in the, in the book of Shemot, to put the chapter 25, Parasha, Truma, before that look like the cut, the chronological uh, teaching? <laughs> because in the middle of this chronological, you are going to find in chapter 30 to 32, you're going to find what? The golden calf. And the Mishkan is going to be like an envelope or covered of the sin of Israel. That's the reason that you're going to see the golden calf in the middle, totally out of chronology. Mm-hmm. But covering the beginning with the Mishkan, doing willingly and taking to God happily and joyfully. And he is going to give us the blueprint of how we need to build the tent. Another thing that you need to look at here, because there are so many teachings, even the people get boring with this parasha, and they don't, they jump over, the, and they don't want to see, you're going to see, for example, the, 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 all the little app- appliances or furniture inside, you know? Even also the, the construction of the menorah, no? The, uh, the, to, to, to build the their pure gold and a very intricate thing. And you ask yourself, what are all those things? What is the meaning? Let's make a little bit of history before they were there. Where they were coming from? Where they were freed from? What we were talking about just last week about being slaves. And how he has given us freedom. But what happens when you are inoculated by a virus and you are taking with you? Many times we say that the Creator took Israel out of Egypt, but Egypt didn't come out out of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that we are in 2019 of the Common Era, and we still have the golden calf, still we have Egypt inside of us, that we cannot get rid of that. Now, something as, as, a, as a pause here. Among all the communities in the world, and this is proven, by the way, you can go to the United Nations, wherever you want to go, the community who give more to a special causes and charitable causes and things in the world is the Jewish community. And it's smaller than the Arab community, than the Russians, than the Chinese, than the Europeans, and the others. And they are the one that gives more than anybody else. You know why? Because of the Torah. And they give, they take willingly. Because we have learned since we were born, we will learn to share, to give. 
and we have the worst reputation in the world. The Catholic Church was very good to, make, to give us this uh, uh, physiognomy or this reputation that we were tied with the money and we didn't give anything to anybody. And the Jewish money has saved so many things. Even the American Revolution was given by a Jew. And why do we have that bad reputation? Pure envy. But all the, country, all the nations of the world, the, all the nations of the world envy Israel. Are we saints? Are we holy than thou? Totally the contrary. We are failing constantly. This is the reason that we have a, a great creator, God, whatever you want to call it, blessed be his name, that he's constantly with us, putting us in direction, reaffirming us, and sometimes giving us a spunky. Mm -hmm. The question here is, to understand the, are we still taking Egypt inside us? Or Egypt has come out already, and we realize that Egypt is being a, a, a what you call it, an obstacle in our lives. Have we completely eliminated Egypt? How many of us we would like to, t to, t to be uh, told, oh, what a wonderful giver is this, or this person, you know, we want to receive attention on us. When you take something, you don't ask for any type of reward from human being, because it's the creator who sees, and she sees your heart. You know what a tent, instead of huge, a uh, building, a huge uh, a temple. Do you know that the Creator never asked to build a temple? Well, us as human beings, what well, started with King David, the one, and then they learned to talking. No, because you, there's too much blood, and then allow his son, Shlomo. But even Shlomo say. What is he doing? You don't need anything. How we can put you inside a place? Here in chapter eight of chapter twenty. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter twenty-five, verse eight. I'm sorry, I committed a mistake. He said, "Veasuli mikdash eshahanti betoham." You know, a main a sanctuary, you know, in which I will dwell among them. You know, he didn't say betoho. He said betoham. Because our creator dwells in all of us. And this little place that, that we call it our community center and becomes our synagogue on Shabbat. That we have our Torah here. And we delight to be together. And we come on Shabbat to have fellowship because the true fellowship is what makes the true relationship with the Creator. It's not about forms, it's about our hearts. And our heart is not about feelings. Our heart is about notion, will, willpower. In which situation are we now? 
this place that we just in, uh, are in the process of inaugurating, and it's so interesting because we are doing the mitash, the rebuilding, uh, building of the tent. Look at compare a tent with huge palace. What was the focus that the Creator wanted to give it to us? In the structure or in Him? What we need to do, only one place we were going to be able to get together, we were going to be all close to each other. And you know what? The Mishkan, the tabernacle, really became a community center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big barbecues. But for everybody, for all the people, to be together. Sometimes we have this place, and we use it only once a week. I don't wish that we could use it more. I know that we're going to come ideas, and we're going to be able to work on that. But the Creator wanted that was every day. because his presence is always with us. Mm -hmm. Has your heart been moved? And people will understand. You have emotionally, you have been touched. And nothing to do with emotions. You know, it's about taking to, to the Creator <laughs> because we want to be part with Him. And if you don't have a willing heart, I recommend you please don't give. And I know that some of you are going to kill me because of what I am saying. No, but we need it. What can you say to people not to give? Because you are being a hypocrite. Why you give and more than I see how much you give? God is not asking you to give. God is asking you to take. And take of yourself. And the first thing that you need to take is yourself. Now you understand why I don't want to talk about this area? Because all of us we are going to fall in one way or the other. Well, I am doing a favor to, to the rabbi. You are not doing any favor to me. And you are not doing a favor to God, by the way. When you bring yourself, bring yourself to the Creator, there is a transformation and your life will flourish. You know what he has? Gold, silver, and copper, and the most expensive things? Bronze. Bronze. You know why? In that time, to get bronze was not easy, mm -hmm. no? Because in that way, he was telling the people where your heart is. Are you tied to your possessions? Or you are in a relationship with the Creator? Where your pocket is, that's what your God is. Sadly enough, very few people understand this message. Some of you have grown with limosna. Some of you have grown 
we arms giving. Some of you have grown with the idea, oh, I am doing something, oh, pull the tear, throw, you know, to, to the poor, thinking that I am doing a great thing. That's not what God is talking about. God is talking about being involved, being part of. And all of us, we need to be on this. As a community, we need to start making ourselves available too. Some of you already that are involved in the communities and you are involved doing things. And we need to do more. But only if we are moved to do it rationally, not emotionally. Don't let your emotions take you to the wrong way. And don't let your emotions to make you feel good because you give a limosna, you give a giving. Don't let your emotions think it because you go, you give two pennies, now you are okay. It's about your involvement as, as a person. That's what the Creator says, bring yourself first. And the rest is going to fall in place. We are going to, we are successful, you know why? Because we are in a, in a way, in a path that's totally different to the regular path that you have learned through the years. We are not following gurus. We are not following institutions. We are not following any religion. We are following the creator. Through his revelation in Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, are people from the beginning who saw his presence and he said, We will do, we will obey and do it. And that is for all of us, the generations that are going to come. Let me go back again to chapter 12 of Shemon. Because sometimes we forget how important is this portion. You know? You know, in chapter, uh, in verse 35, chapter 12, they say that the Egypt, the, uh, following the orders of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Israelite request to the Egyptians articles of silver, gold, and other types of garments. I'm sorry, I lost my place. And then From verse 37, chapter 12. And the Israelites, they start from Ramses to Sukkot. There were 600,000 men without counting the women and the children. Mm -hmm. 
At the same time, there was an Erev Rab, a mixed multitude that was going within. And they went within many foreigners that were not Israelites. From the beginning of Israel, as a people who were redeemed or coming out of the slavery, they came always mixed with other people. The Creator has always been calling people from outside Israel to bring it in into Israel. And they become so much part of us that it's no different between one or the other. Our team, our guide is our Torah. And when you become part of Israel, you are a willing heart because you serve the Lord, bringing yourself first, your family, and everything that's close to you, dedicating to the Creator. How much each of do we have right now? It's a matter of struggles. But one thing it's obvious that in everyday struggle that we have, we become more clear about who do we serve. We don't need any longer to choose one or the other, because now we know who do we serve. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>